Hello Thermo fans, welcome to our first problem of the day. What are we working on today? Well today, since we're just starting out, we're going to start with a closed system energy balance just to re-warm up our energy balance muscles. And uh, we're going to revisit a bunch of useful equations, some of which you will have used before, some of which are probably going to be new. Um, but you're going to be equation shopping through your textbook and, uh, and online. So in our closed cycle balance, and I put the cycle in quotation marks because you'll see later on in the semester that we've done some maybe cheating things in this particular cycle. It's only three steps, um, but we'll uh, revisit that when we come to entropy. So uh, when you're looking at a closed system problem, you, we have this kind of classic setup that everybody does, which is the piston and the cylinder. So that is a kind of a can that's got something that can slide in and out of it that uh, blocks the exit. So we have just the same amount of gas in there all the time. So we have one mole of gas in this piston cylinder and it starts at 298K and two bar or two megapascals. Those are two ways of saying the same thing. And a volume which uh, is currently unknown, but we're gonna call it volume V1, right? And then we're gonna take this and we're gonna allow it to expand uh, isothermally. So that means we'll keep the temperature the same and we're gonna have it expand until the volume comes out to V2, uh, which is going to coincidentally be twice V1. And then uh, we are gonna, um, we're gonna call that, by the way, that first state is state one, the second state is state two, and now we're going to do our transition to state three. Our state three is going to be compressing back to our original volume, V1, and we're going to do that compression adiabatically. Uh, now, think, go back and look at day one definitions if we need to, to see what adiabatic means if uh, you've forgotten, but now we're back to V1. And this is called state three. And finally, we're going to loop back to what gets us to the beginning. Okay, so since we're already at V1, this final step is going to be isochoric. We're going to stay at V1, and we are going to have to cool the system uh, to get it back uh, to its original 298K 0.2 megapascals slash two bars. And so uh, what I want you to do for this problem which is going to be pretty involved, it's going to take some time, uh, you're going to have to be organized about this, is to find the change in internal entropy for every step, you know, so between every step, you're going to also find work and Q, which is heat, for each change, so all of those changes, um, and then you're going to find all of those things for overall, for the overall system. Um, I'm going to give you a couple of hints here. We're going to start by making a few assumptions. Assumption number one is that this is an ideal gas, and assumption number two is we're not going to worry about friction with the piston cylinder. We may make some other assumptions as we go. Let's get started. Let's uh, look at how we're going to solve this problem, and I'm going to give you a couple of mechanical things that make this easier. Uh, clearly, we're going to be using energy balances, but before we dive into that, I find it's very helpful to make a table. And what this table is going to do is going to keep the information we know and the information we find organized um, and also make it clear which things are kind of state properties that belong to a particular state and which come out of the transitions. So you'll see this table I've got here. I've got temperature, pressure, volume, uh, which are our state variables. And then I also have stuck on here things that have to do only with transitions. So while internal energy is a state property, delta U, a change in internal energy, is uh, something that only goes with a transition between states. Q and work are only path properties, so they only show up at transitions. So you see I have labeled things kind of back and forth, where I have number one, that's state one, and then I have an arrow that indicates the change between state one and state two. And you see I'm going to go through and I'm going to cross off uh, because there is no one temperature associated with the change from state one to state two. I don't need that square. Uh, so only the states themselves, one, two, three, 
are going to have temperature, pressure, and volume, whereas only the transitions will have delta U, delta, uh, not delta Q, delta U, Q, and W. Okay, so this helps us keep it organized. And now, I lied. We're not ready to write equations yet. First, we're going to write down what we know. So I'm, I'm filling in some of the values that we have from uh, our problem statement. So we know, for example, that the temperature is 298K to begin with. We know that the pressure is 2 bar to begin with. We know, we don't know what volume is. We could work it out. But uh, right now we know it's V1. We know that the temperature is the same coming into state 2. So we can fill all of that in. Now we're going to write some. Okay, so we have this lovely table. Now what are we going to do? Normally, I'd let you off here, but I'm going to suggest this time a process, and I'm going to start that process with you. So here's this process I am recommending. Whenever you encounter a problem with this, first start by writing your full energy balance. Write out all the terms, get the whole thing down. Then cross out the stuff you don't need, right? Like, are we going to need kinetic energy? Who knows? Let's, uh, let's cross that out. Then you're going to seek what I call back doors. I'll explain that in a minute, but it's things other than the energy balance that let you solve the energy balance. And then finally, we're going to put the numbers in and actually get some solutions. So we don't do that till the end. So let's get ready to give this a shot for this problem. And let's start with the transition from step one, or state one to state two. So this is our first step. What's happening here? Well, we're going to write our full closed system energy balance. So here it comes. You should be able to look this up. Um, I'm using slightly different terminology. Uh, then the book, I'm leaving out G sub C because that's silly and, and we don't actually need it if we, as long as we stay in metric units. So on the left-hand side, we have change in internal energy, change in kinetic energy, change in potential energy. And on the right, we have Q and work. The first term is shaft work. That's like when you have a stirrer or a turbine. And the other one is expansion contraction work. So now let's look at part B. What's happening in part B? Well, part B is what can we cross out? Well, do we know anything about speed here? Do we see any overall changes in system height? No and no. So we're going to ditch kinetic energy. We're going to ditch potential energy. We do that quite often. That's fine. Um, we're also going to ditch shaft work because we're not stirring or mixing anything. There's no turbines involved. So those are all the things that can go away right now. So we have a much simpler energy balance where we have delta U being equal to Q and WEC. So that's very nice. Uh, something else may be able to go away, but we don't actually know that yet. So we'll just leave this as it is. Now, uh, number C, what I call the back door. So these are other equations that inform what's going on here that aren't the energy balance. So for example, does the definition of internal energy help us out? Or does the definition of expansion contraction work help us out. Hint, they both do. So for example, for an ideal gas, delta U is equal to integral CV dt, whether or not you're at constant volume or constant pressure. It doesn't matter. For an ideal gas, that works all the time, only for an ideal gas. So maybe that makes our lives a little simpler when you think about this. Are we ready to solve yet? Not quite, because we have one equation and there's still kind of maybe three unknowns. But by applying this idea of a back door, we have a way to get at a numerical value for delta U. And you're also going to have a way to get a numerical value for WEC. Um, Q almost never has a back door that works. I know you kind of learned one in PCAM, but that is built upon several assumptions that you can't necessarily jump to. So you should work on, uh, in this case, delta U and uh, WEC and see what happens, okay? And then you could plug those values into the energy balance and uh, understand what's going on overall. And then you can fill in your table and then you're ready to go on to step two, all right? The state change between two and three. Um, I'll also put in, some people like in solving a problem like this to work out what is V1 and what is V2. Numerically, you can do that. Um, you can get pretty far in this problem without numerically solving for that. But um, I'm going to leave that up to you. And you can see if you, how far you can make it, or you can see if you'd rather just have a number there. Okay, so now, what happens now? This is how problem of the day is in general going to work. I'm going to set it up, I'm going to give you some hints, 
and you're gonna have watched this video before class time. Then you're gonna come into class time and you're gonna get right down and start working on this. And the benefit of doing this kind of during class time is during class time, you will have the opportunity to kind of group up with some other people in class and talk to each other about what you're doing. And also talk to me about what you're doing. Get some live question and answer going on uh, as we all work together. And as you work together, I want you to nominate, uh, I want you to ask questions in Slack, and also I want you to nominate elements as answers. So I want you to go into Slack, for example, and I want you to say, hey, I think the answer um, for uh, Delta U for step one is this, and you put in a number. And then uh, other people are going to either respectfully agree or respectfully disagree with you, nominate their own answers. And when we have consensus, that's going to be the answer uh, we start working from. Um, I am not going to necessarily reveal hidden answers. I am going to look at your process and make some comments on your process and uh, have us collaboratively develop the answer key at the end here. So the answer key doesn't emerge if no one does the problem. There is no answer key. So we're all, we're all working on it together. And this works kind of within class time. So uh, get ready, having watched this, have your paper set up and uh, come into uh, the Zoom or the class and uh, work on this problem. Share the numbers that you're getting as we go and, uh, and then ask questions and we'll get all of that kind of addressed as we move forward. Okay? All right. Bye-bye.